So I thought for this demo, I'd do something a little different and uh, basically show you Lightburn from start to finish uh, making a small project. So um, this is a fresh install. Um, so the first thing I have to do is configure this for the laser that I'm going to be using it with. So if you bring up the settings, um, I'm going to be using a little K40, which has a 300 by 200 millimeter bed and it is not mirrored, so that means the origin is down here. So the red dot is the origin, so this the bed is set up correctly. Um, the next thing I have to do is actually configure my devices. So Lightburn can talk to more than one kind of laser. So I have in my garage a big laser. It's got an Ethernet controller, so I'm going to set that one up here and add it. And here in my office I've got a uh, Cohesion 3D mini board running Gerbil connected to this K40. So I'm going to add that one as well. And I'm going to set that as the default because that's the one that's connected to this machine. So as soon as I hit OK, it's going to activate the default device. And you'll actually see the K40 go through its homing sequence. And down here on the screen, I see ready. So the Cohesion board has connected and I can jog around on the page by using this locate button, the little locate pin, and clicking. So you can see the laser moving around there. So I'm going to do something uh, a little different than usual. I'm going to actually make a little project to set up here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is import. Now I have hotkeys for all of this, but I figured I would also show me clicking the buttons. Um, grab one of my laser documents. So this is an Adobe Illustrator file uh, that has a bunch of emojis in it. Um, I only want one of them though. I want the poop emoji. So the dot dash dot dash line means that this is grouped. So I'm going to ungroup it. Just remove this one. Delete the rest. Grab that guy and move it down onto my page. And I want to put a little caption underneath it, so I'm going to use the font tool, right? poop, that is a terrible font and it's way too big, so I'm going to pick something a little different. Um, let's try, what have I got, Rockwell. Um, I'm going to nudge this up underneath here and line it up so that they're centered with each other. All right, so that's roughly the look I'm going for, but I want an outline around the shape. I want to scan fill this and then do an outline around this. So I'm going to grab both of these, use the offset tool, and you can see I can adjust where that offset line is. Um, so I'm going to do about two millimeters here. So that's roughly what I want, but I don't want these little stragglers in the middle. So if I ungroup this and deselect the outline. I'm left with just these pieces here. I can delete those. Um, this is basically what I want, but I don't think I like this font. So I'm going to go back, undo, and try something more like that. I think that's what I want. It's a little too big. Nudge that up just a touch. All right, so I'm going to redo my outline again. Remember, my last setting. Um, so that's pretty much the shape that I'm going for. Um, what I wanted to do is cut this outline and then scan the insides. So I'm going to change this, first of all, to a scan then cut. Um, what that means is it's going to raster fill the inside of the shape, and then it's going to run an outline. So it'll do that all in one pass. You don't have to duplicate the vectors for it. Um, the outline, however, I want it to be different. I want that one to just be a straight cutout. So I'll just change the cut layer for that. And then I want to set up my scan and cut options. So I'm going to run that at 100, we'll do say 4% power. Um, I'm going to do it relatively coarse at only a third of a millimeter step over. Um, and then the post cut, the run after it's done, I'm also going to do it 3%, um, or sorry, 4%. So it's going to do a raster over the full shape and then it's going to run the outline of the shape. And you can see that if I select these and I preview the cut, that's roughly what it's going to do. So you can see these. this is where all of those lines are going to go. Um, the final cutout pass, I want this to go at 25 millimeters a second. 
Uh, I'm going to do 75% power, and I'm going to go total overkill and do five passes just to make sure that this cuts through. Now, normally you'd probably run a lower speed and fewer passes. Your mileage varies. I just wanted to show off the feature. Uh, I'm going to turn on path optimization. Um, I have no idea where this is going to end up on my laser, so the next thing I have to do is figure that out. So if you look at the laser bed, I can use the locate tool and just click on various places on the design and see where they end up. That's not bad, but it's not right, so I'm going to move that over a bit. I can also run a frame, and this will basically trace the boundary around the cut, basically this box that surrounds it, um, with the laser head and just show you where it's going to go. Alright, so that's close. It's still not quite right. So I'm going to move this down to about there and try again. It's a little better. Down a little further. to be probably there, maybe over just a touch more. That's actually pretty good. Maybe I'll just nudge that up just a bit. Um, so once I've got that laid out, figured out how I want it cut, make sure my laser is on, and hit start. Thanks for watching.